Hi, my name is Julie Jenkins, and I'm a pastoral counselor at Addiction Free in Christ, a ministry of miracles. A ministry without walls or boundaries, a threefold ministry, helping people receive salvation, receive deliverance from the slavery of addiction, and also to receive healing of their mind, soul, and body. And this is the word for the week. And the word for the week is actually three words, it is written. And those are Jesus's words, it is written. You may have heard about the great economic reset. However, many pastors have said God is doing a great spiritual reset with the church. He's doing a reset to get our minds back on him and his word. The reset is getting back to the Word of God and taking it literally, just as it is. Jesus is real. God is real. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is real. And they're but one God. That means when Jesus paid for our sins and carried our diseases on the cross, He also resurrected on the third day because that's what Scripture says. This is the key to healing and deliverance through Jesus. In Romans 8, 11, the Bible says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead <clears throat> will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. <clears throat> so that very power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Isn't that amazing that God has put His Spirit in us as a guarantee of our internal inheritance we, when we go to be with Him. And that's the focus of our life. Our focus should be on Jesus. Jesus is He who's, is who He says He is. Let's look at Luke 24. And that's about the true story of Jesus' resurrection. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared, but they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, the men in shining garments said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here but risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee and the son of, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. That's the 11 disciples. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself what had happened. Now, behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which is seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. So it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. So God hid himself from them in a supernatural way, I believe. And he said to them, What conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? And then one of those whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you only a stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So he said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides 
all this, today is the third day since these things happened, yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they also had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. <coughs> And here's a key verse in the text where God gets refocuses the mind of the reader, the believer, on him. Then he said to them, this is Jesus speaking, <coughs> Excuse me, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe, <coughs> Excuse me, in all that the prophets have spoken, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them all the scriptures, in all the scriptures, all the things concerning himself. And we can say to ourselves, how many times have we been foolish, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken about Jesus? Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and entered into his glory? All the things prophesied in Isaiah 53, all throughout the Old Testament for the New Testament. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, verse 28. And he indicated that he would have gone farther, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward the evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road, while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Have, sometimes our hearts are burning in us when God draws, draws close to us and we are missing him, missing the message of his first coming in Christmas and his soon return yet to be fulfilled. Sometimes we feel that same longing, and the Lord has promised He will return soon. And the, no man knows the day or the hour, but we know that the signs are being fulfilled that were prophesied all throughout the Bible. And all the signs needed have been fulfilled. But yet when you surrendered your life to Jesus, He is eternally present and lives by His Holy Spirit in you. God causes that sensation in your heart, that desire and longing for Him, so that you'll draw close to the Word and fellowship with other Christians in the church of your choice. Now, I'm going to continue with the scripture. It says in verse 36, Now, as they said these things, Jesus Himself stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be to you. And they were terrified and frightened. Suppose they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that is, I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it for the joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate it in their presence. This proved that he was in the body and not a, a, a ghost or a spirit like they presumed, because he was eating along with them. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was with, and that while I was with you, that all the things that must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. What an amazing moment it was for the disciples where they comprehended it all. And then the key text again is 
in the message today, it is written, is right here. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it is necessary for Christ to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. So they did have an experience in Jerusalem later in, in Luke 1, 2. You can read about uh, those experiences. It was awesome how the Holy Spirit was poured out on Pentecost. And uh, then he led them out as far as Bethany, Scripture says, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God amen so that I'm reading out of the New King James Version in case you want to follow along in that version um, also in Acts 1 9 through 11 records that the angel said to the disciples watching while Jesus was carried or ascended into heaven this is what the scripture says now he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, and behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven, that this same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will soon come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven? So we can look to Jesus appearing and this hope that makes not ashamed is the spiritual renewal for the church. Let me pray with you now. Lord, we pray right now in Jesus' name that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, as we read from Ephesians 1.18. Heavenly Father, we ask for healing and true deliverance that comes through our risen Lord, our living hope. We pray for your Holy Spirit. You would move through our lives to others who are in need, who have physical, spiritual, mental needs, Lord, because we are your ambassadors here on earth to help people become citizens of heaven, Lord. We thank you for this great call. We thank you for your healing. It says in scriptures, that by your stripes, Lord Jesus, we were healed. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking our sins on that cross and taking away all our diseases and our afflictions. And we pray people would be healed right now by your power. In your holy name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. So um, we are excited about what God is going to do soon, his, his soon return, and that um, and how he's calling you by name to be his child. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So we are Christ's ambassadors. Each one of us is called. We're the priesthood of believers through Christ, through the Holy Spirit, and your body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit, who you have from God, and you are not your own, Scripture says. So you belong to God, and God has you in the palm of his hand, and you're his sheep, and he promises to be your shepherd and carry you forever, to be your God. And he is faithful and just, and he loves people. He loves you. He loves all those people that have strayed from him. And um, he's calling us to him in these last hours to turn to him and to help others find him also. So thank you for listening, and please give us a call at 217-617-5577 if you need to talk or if you would like us to pray with you about your prayer need. We also have a prayer list that goes across the United States by email. If you have a prayer need, please let us know. And our website again is www.addictionfreeinchrist.com. 
Well, thank you for joining us for the Word for the Weekend. And um, Jerry and I are praying for you, and God bless you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.